But this is a way to pacify young men and keep them weak. And that's not the only thing that's happened. We're re-educating uh, our young men through egalitarian curriculum of, of, of our governments, our, our schools, our churches. And this is the battle I have as a pastor. Evangelicalism is wretched. It's horrible. I believe everything in Scripture is inerrant. You should believe everything. I want you all to convert. That's who I am. That's what this is about. I'm not ashamed of Christianity. I am ashamed of evangelicalism. I do not blame men for checking out. You should not have to leave your balls at the door of a church. It should not be happening. God made men and women. He said, it is good, right? This is his good work. But we're watching uh, men put aside their masculine drive for sex, for ambition, to do well, all for the glory of God. You have to come and be weak to be in a church. And we're destroying everything good about men in the world needs men. So we are, we are re-educating them that way. And, and through some of the stuff you see on YouTube, man. YouTube, if you're a dad, you know, right now, like, we're having battles with screens and, like, YouTubers. You know, like, my kids don't care about TV. They don't follow anything. And when I was a kid, I, I, I had to sneak to watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And then my kids are watching all these crazy YouTubers. And I'm, some of them are, like, interesting. Uh, some of them uh, I would like to, to meet in person. Um, and then we kill men via abortion. America is built on the backs of a mountain of dead babies. Blood. That's our country. We deserve to be judged. Millions and millions. These people talking about 200,000 COVID deaths. Give me a break. Compared to what we've done. And they, we kill men that way. But we also kill men through this culture of shame. Now, shame's good. If I step on a nail, it hurts. It's my body saying, don't do that. And when you feel shame for something that's immoral and bad, that's your soul saying, don't do that, okay? But I, I shouldn't move my hand in a natural way and it hurts, right? Something's wrong if I'm moving my hand. Something's broken. And if you act like a man, you feel shame for that, something's wrong. That's an evil shame. And we are shaming men for being masculine. Little boys. You guys read the APA standards that came out a couple years, probably, how they define toxic masculinity. And it's just masculinity. Like, we just hate men, and they want to change little boys. And that creates this culture of depression and hopelessness. Are we surprised that male suicide rates are crazy high? Just this past weekend, I was out at a, a church conference, because that's what I do. I go to a church conference one weekend, and then I go to a conference like this the next. Uh, life is grand. But... Um, we were out there, and they were talking about the 16-year-old that, that shot himself, and, and they were describing that the, the family, the family was a good family. They moved around a little bit, but uh, because of the pandemic, this kind of been stuck in house. This is like really hard. As a dad, I can only tell my kids to use their imagination until like, I'm sick of me saying it. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty boring. Um, but this kid's stuck in the house, and he just kept watching. YouTube and playing video games and we're different like Discord servers or whatever and just it's all hopeless, so hopeless. Young 16 year old man blew his head off and mom and dad walked in there to find that mess, right? And they come, the pastor comes and they're covered in the child's blood. This is, this is America. This is the real systemic problem that no one seems to be talking about except people like you, people like the 21 convention and a few Christians here and there. So it's still going on. The war on men is. It's still happening. It's very depressing, right? It's as widespread and intense as it's ever been. But I, I want to remind you of something. So Pharaoh, he tried to kill baby Moses, right? Tried to kill that generation. Didn't work. Moses ends up, uh, the, guy, the baby he tries to kill is uh, raised to manhood in his own house, right? It's one of these beautiful ironies of Scripture. Tried to re-educate Moses, tried to train him, make him into Egyptian, but that doesn't take either, right? And they tried to pacify him, and that didn't work either. And so Moses ends up uh, being the one to destroy Pharaoh. Moses is the normal guy, right? He started out as a normal man. And God, God loves to use normal men to destroy tyranny. He loves it. God loves to use the foolish things of the world. I always tell people God is a great comedian, and I'm one of his jokes. And I just, I've, I've had a weird life. I've been a professional card counter. I've, 
ran, uh, I've written a blog post that I won't tell you the name, well, I will tell you this blog post, actually. I started a viral media site with a friend of mine, and we learned that millennials were really easy to uh, troll. And so we, wanted, we found out, like, if people click on this, we made a lot of AdSense money. And so I created a post on um, uh, how beautiful Disney princesses are if they're overweight. You know, I, I paid someone to draw all these fat Disney princesses, and that thing still gets comments on it today. Like, um, it was like six million views when it first went out. But uh, I, I got to do that, I get to do this. You know, life's been really crazy and, and cool. God uses uh, people like me. I'm, I'm, there's nothing very great about me at all. There's nothing really that impressive. Um, so God likes to use normal men, men like you, men that are waking up, men that are just sick of the games. And I think one reason I'm getting so much traction online right now is that a lot of Christian men are like, is this it? Is, is Christianity really this egalitarian and feministic? Because when I read the Bible, it doesn't seem like that. God the Father, <laughs> Christianity is patriarchal to the core. Mary Daly, she's a feminist scholar. I, I love radical feminists. They're like my favorite people in the world. I, I, I can't stand Christian feminists, and here's why. Christian feminists, they just lie through their teeth. You have to, to make the Bible sink to feminism. But radical feminists like Shulamith Firestone or Betty Friedan or whoever you want to go through, they're like just, they just hate Christianity. And they just like, we got to get rid of men and we got to get rid of the womb. And they just say all those things. And they're, they're so refreshingly honest. And these guys are starting to like realize that egalitarianism is false and it's not true and they're waking up and guys like me they're just tweeting out really simple things it's kind of funny you know that that's catching fire and that's very encouraging to me right that's telling me that the reason these little sparks can create a uh, fire is the ground's dry and ready and they're ready they're ready for uh folks to start taking um taking charge and this you know, I'm not a MGTOW guy. I got a lot of MGTOW guys that follow me. I sympathize with them. Um, but you know what? No. I'm not going to let the Pharaoh destroy me and destroy my generation. It's not happening. I am not checking out. I'm going to war. Absolutely. I might lose. I might. I don't know. I wouldn't be the first guy that tried to go to war and, and lost. But uh, I'm going to go down on my shield, okay? And I, I want to tell you guys to do the same. I want you to go down on your shield. Go down fighting. Are you going to let these people do this to our kids? Are you going to stand for this? You're just going to enjoy uh, the, the ash heap that's society right now? You're just going to enjoy this? The little bit of shining pieces? The corn and the pile of crap? I, no. No, we're going to do something about this. And the thing is, if men will become fathers, boys will become men. Like the world needs men. God made this world for men. Six days, he makes this world, and on the sixth day, he puts man and woman in it to rule and reign over it as a royal priesthood. This world was made for us, not the animals. For us, the animals are made for us. That's why they taste so good. Um, <laughs> so I want to challenge you men to be patriarchs. And let me give you just a couple practical things to think about. I want to use the model.